Hello everyone, Stephen aka Beer Beard here, speaking to you on a Saturday lunchtime here in London in the UK on a rather cold, well no not too cold, but overcast and rainy day. I've just uh, dined well on peanut butter and marmite sandwiches and now I'm enjoying, if I can get it lit, my first pipe since last Sunday because I've been rather ill all week, feeling very under the weather. Oh, I felt like doing it so well, I have to walk the dog twice a day, which is mandatory, however rough you're feeling. And other than that, I've been dividing my time between lying on the sofa or lying in bed. But I'm feeling on the mend now, so I thought I'd do my VR to Johan, the mindful pipe. I've spoken by Mr. Brog. The reason I've chosen this, I mean, it's a reliable pipe, a good smoker anyway, but it takes a 9mm charcoal filter and I didn't want to run the risk of um, irritating my throat. And in it, I haven't got the packet here, but I've got my good old Benton and Hedges Mellow Virginia. Now Johan asked us to muse about Christmas. Good Christmases, bad Christmases, our idea of what is what, how we feel about Christmas in general. So I thought I'd add mine to Bennyworth. Uh, as a parent, my best Christmases were when my kids were younger, without question. I enjoyed the whole thing then. The whole, um, it was their excitement that I got off on, their anticipation and excitement. The whole build-up over the, the couple of weeks beforehand, because we didn't start too early with them. We'd leave it until December before we'd start letting them really sort of get into it. And... Um, yeah, the whole anticipation and excitement, the going to Christmas shows and fairs at their school, um, taking them ice skating, taking them to the cinema to see the, the big Christmas release, whichever it was at the time. And then Christmas Eve, putting the mince pie and the carrot out for Father Christmas and his reindeer packing them off to bed and then when they were asleep sneaking into their bedroom and putting stockings at the end of their bed and then I'd get everything ready for cooking the Christmas dinner the next day and I'd lay a fire in the fireplace in the living room so that all I had to do was put a match to it the next morning and then get up the next morning light the fire and watch the kids open their presents and it was great and then cooking the Christmas dinner um, and the ones I liked best of all were when there were just the four of us. There was me, my wife at the time, now my ex-wife, and the two girls. I found generally that the more you added other family into the mix, the more, the more things could go off the rails at times. When it was just us, it was cosy, warm, it was great. The girls could sit around in their pyjamas all day if they wanted to. I didn't care. It was Christmas Day. As long as everyone was happy and well fed and warm, that was all that mattered. Of course, that's all in the past now. And, you know, you can't bring it back. You can't turn back the clock. For me, an ideal Christmas now would be probably waking up under the same roof as my girls on Christmas morning and that hasn't happened for five years now but you know you never know it may come back may happen again I won't bore you with the reasons why it doesn't happen now but don't worry it's nothing to do with me I'm, I'm not under a restraining order or anything um, <laughs> and so until such time as that happens I suppose um, my ideal Christmas is knowing that wherever they are and whatever they're doing, they are happy, content, warm and healthy. And I think really that's all any parent ever really wants for their kids. So I'll settle for that.
whether they're spending it with me or whether like this year they're spending it with their mother as long as they're happy that's all that matters to me if I'm on my own I just go about my business and it just becomes pretty much an ordinary day you know it's no big deal and then when we do get together we have a good time People talk about you know, the, the commercialisation of Christmas. Has Christmas become too commercial? Has it been spoiled? Has it lost its meaning? Um, Christmas has been commercial for a long, long time. Long before I was born, and I'm no spring chicken, Christmas was being commercialised. It's, in the Western world at least, probably the biggest holiday of the year. So of course in the society in which we live it's going to become commercialised. Is it a bad thing? Well that depends on your point of view. Personally I just take it for what it is. Um, is it more commercial now than it was when I was a kid? Well it's all a matter of degree because there are far more avenues open to hammer people with the Christmas message. When I was a kid we had two channels on the TV in the UK. No internet, you know, limited shopping ability, uh, experiences, openings. There were no big shopping centres, anything like that. So, of course, it seems more full on now and more commercial, but it's all relative. It's just, we're going, you know, society is evolving and Christmas is evolving with it. And that's what... I think it's natural that each generation, as they get older, they tend to view the present through a prism of their past, of their past memories. And they can often find the present wanting. They can say, you know, it's not like it used to be. But then in a sense, I think a lot of the time that's just nostalgia for our own past that's gone and isn't coming back. And um, to me, there's no point in dwelling on it. Um, things are different now. Take it for what it is and go with it and enjoy it. Um, I can't foresee the future any more than anyone else can. But I'd be willing to bet that people that are kids now, 30 or 40 years hence, will be moaning the fact that Christmas is all commercial now. It's nothing like it was when I was a kid. It's human nature. You know, they'll all be sitting there in their silver jumpsuits, living in bubbles in the sky. And putting on virtual reality headsets and having a virtual Christmas lunch. That's my vision of the future, by the way. Yours might differ. So, what I say is, enjoy it for what it is, and go with the flow. Treasure the old memories, but make new memories, and keep them alongside them. That's my advice anyway. Now, I think I'm running out of battery, so I better cut this short. Christmas music. Um, I like all sorts of Christmas music. Secular, Christmas carols, the whole lot. Um, of modern tunes, and it's not particularly a new tune, but of the modern era, I would say the one that stands up to repeated listeners most for me is probably The Pokes and Kirsty McColl, Fairy Tale of New York. But for me, the ultimate Christmas song, my big favourite, is Judy Garland singing Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas from the musical Meet Me in St Louis. I'll try and put a link in the down below's to the clip of her doing it. Um, for those who haven't seen the film and aren't familiar with the story, the family are spending their last Christmas in St Louis or St Louis, I don't know the correct way to say it, because their father's job is moving to New York. So the whole family is going to be uprooted and leave behind everything they've ever known. So it's quite a distressing time for them. And Judy Garland is singing the song to her little sister to try and comfort her. Although it's also heartbreaking for Judy because she's going to be leaving behind the first boy that she's ever fallen for. And it's, so it's pretty poignant and bittersweet and it gets me every time. It's been covered by loads of people ever since then, but um, for me there's no one that does it like Judy. So that's my favourite Christmas song. And... I thought I'd throw in for good measure my favourite Christmas film. 
it's not a particularly original choice. But for me, it has to be Frank Capra's It's a Wonderful Life, starring James Stewart. I've seen that film a gazillion times over the years, and I still fill up at the final scene every time. I love it. So I better cut this short now because the bash is just about to run out. So it just leaves me to say, here's to George Bailey, the richest man in town. And for the rest of you, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I hope you manage to have yourselves a merry little Christmas. And by the way, I haven't got a giant head. This hat belongs to my dog. He's down there, watch it. And he's allowed me to borrow it for the occasion. Fortunately, I haven't started scratching, so I don't think I've picked anything up. And on that note, I shall leave you. Bye-bye, everyone. Hope to speak to you again soon. And have a Merry Christmas.